Welcome to the 2021 Client Appreciation Challenge, where together we will inspire, encourage, and equip each other to show gratitude to our most important assets and allies, our clients. Each day of the challenge, you will discover powerful ways to say thank you, as we are led by some of the world's most creative and influential thought leaders. Now let's join our hosts, Larry Levine and Daryl Amy, as we challenge each other to show appreciation. Uh, (laughs) Welcome back to day two of the 2020 Appreciation Challenge. Daryl Amy here with my good friend, Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? Oh, uh, you know, I'm so excited, but I, I still, I'm going back to yesterday with Tom Hopkins and the messages that have been flooding back with stories in my email have just been just crazy over the top, Daryl. It is so exciting and and uh, just a huge hats off. Tom Hopkins was amazing <laughs> yesterday. Uh, it's great seeing everyone come in on the chat. what do you think about Tom Hopkins yesterday? Larry, I just went out. I bought five quarts of ice cream, and I'm going to ship them <laughs> out today to our favorite <laughs> participants. <laughs> oh, it's good to see Brian. It looks like uh, – oh, Brian's here as well from Dwyer. Welcome. we got Jerry in the house. Uh, give it up. Yeah, just join the chat. Get involved in this. This is uh, This is fantastic. We've got – a really exciting day here today with our good friend Lee Sauls. He is going to bring it home in terms of some very practical things we can do to show appreciation and in the process differentiate ourselves, which is going to be fantastic. It's he, I love Lee. I love Lee, and he's it's 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 so good because the one thing I do like about Lee Daryl, he's a baseball nut just like me so uh, but anyway well, he, is, it, uh, he is not a baseball nut for the same team that you are i'm sure we're going to hear about that but, <laughs> hey if this is your first day live here on the 2021 client appreciation challenge welcome we're glad you're here um we are leading up to friday which is national customer appreciation day and we thought that this would be a fantastic way to bring some of our best friends some of the most inspirational thought leaders to the table to coach us and let us challenge each other to show appreciation. Because if there's anything that uh, provides, as I saw yesterday, Larry, the the X factor uh, differentiator right now, it's simply taking the time to say thank you and show appreciation. Yeah. And even peeling that back, even one more layer with one word and Tom Hopkins, Daryl used it a couple times yesterday was the discipline. It's the discipline to do this every day on a consistent basis over and over and over again. So we are going to challenge each other. It's all about taking action. And yesterday's challenge was to share a, either a story or an idea about the most outrageous, crazy, (laughs) inspirational way that you've ever said, thank you. And Larry, it was fun talking with folks. We got a couple entries that were just over the top and we picked one today. It's going to go in a drawing, actually not a drawing, we're going to vote, like American Idol kind of vote on Friday on the best best challenge for gratitude response. But today's today's video and story, (laughs) you just got to tee this up, Larry. I'm going to find it. No, no, sorry. You know what I got? I just got got stuck on, Daryl. You used them just like on American Idol. So now you just (laughs) let the cat out of the bag. Hey, everyone, Daryl watches American Idol. Daryl's wife watches American Idol, but uh, which uh, yes, that means Daryl watches American Idol. This is uh, this is not an American Idol performance in terms of music, but in terms of gratitude, I think this one would make the final show. Check out George Henderson's video. You're going to be so amazed and inspired by this. Good morning, client appreciation community. This is George Henderson in Annapolis, Maryland. What a great start to the week yesterday. So Daryl asked us to bring it, so here's the goods. So for my thank you, it's really a two part. When I was living over in the UK, working throughout Europe, we were pursuing a very large opportunity with a client in Switzerland. And my sidekick and wingman was a senior systems engineer out of Switzerland. And I found out that he and his wife were redoing and renovating their entire kitchen. So he was so instrumental in closing the deal, I absolutely had to pay it forward. And with the receipt of my commission check, I spoke, uh, reached out and spoke to his wife, found out the cost of what his remodeling was going to be, and paid for the entire thing. 
it was just the natural and the right thing to do. The deal would have not happened without his tremendous work and effort and support and his tenacity throughout the entire sales process. And the second part is, is the client was so related, they were based in Zurich, that we decided to take out the entire senior leadership, as well as uh, some of their direct reports and the people that were directly involved in the solution that we were gonna be providing. And we took them out to a very prestigious restaurant that was 700 years old. Very difficult to get reservations, but we were able to pull it off. Needless to say, we had a very happy client, a very thankful client, and a very appreciative client. And it's an uh, experience that um, I'll never forget. I hope to repeat someday, but it's something that I think was worth mentioning to this group. So on to the rest of this week. Let's have a great rest of the week. And thanks, Larry and Daryl. You guys are the best. Wow. Oh, I, I tell, I, how do you top that one? <laughs> he paid for their renovation. That and oh my goodness. I, I, George, I want, I want to go to that 700 year old restaurant with you. If you. It sounds like you got the hookup. Hey, that is, that is really, really beautiful. And I, um, <laughs> George, you said the bar pretty Oh, high, George Henderson. Oh, my Amazing. Gosh. I love George. By the way, um, if you want to join us, um, and and if if we pick your uh, if we pick your video, and you're not already in the VIP group, we've got a VIP group for the challenge. We got like baseball hats, uh, tip of the hat to Larry and Lee. Um, we've also got uh, a <laughs> VIP reception and a couple other goodies for you, just for cheering us on here in the challenge. Uh, put the the link to the VIP group in the chat if you want to join us for that. Uh, we would love to have you. Uh, it's going to be our VIP reception is going to be on Thursday evening at five o'clock Eastern. So if you're in that group, you'll get some details for that. This is going to be great. And Brian, you're right. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Let's roll. Brian is throwing down the gauntlet. He's going to take on George and see if we can top that. for. Gratitude. I want to see a Brian Kelm video. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a lot of fun on this. And uh, as we get started, speaking of video, uh, we just want to give a huge shout out to our good friends at BombBomb. They're helping us rehumanize business and they're making it very simple to send a heartfelt thank you um, in the form of videos. And Larry, uh, when I send BombBomb videos out as a thank you just to follow up or just to say hi and I appreciate you to someone, I'm overwhelmed with the response that I get. It, it's amazing and, and most of the comebacks go, how'd you do that? Right. That's so cool. It's it's so simple. We'll demo it later this week, but you basically download an app, put it in front of your face, talk and, and text it out. We've got a quick uh, word of encouragement from our friends at BombBomb, Bomb, and then we're going to dive into the rest of our program today with Lee Sauls. Selling from the heart means putting you back into the sales process, your passion, your energy, the emotion you bring, the belief you have in your product or service. Sales is a transfer of emotion. But can that happen if you're hiding behind a keyboard? Will another text-based message in their inbox get you to where you want to go? There's a better way and it starts with you. You in front of more people more often through a video messaging platform like BombBomb. We want to guide you along the Selling from the Heart process. Sign up for a free trial of BombBomb at bombbomb.com or sign up for a demonstration and sell from the heart by being face-to-face -face with more people more often. Oh, that's I can't so think good. Of a better time to take advantage of that generous offer. No credit card required. They just want to get them, help you get the message out and say thank you. So as we head into Client Appreciation Day on Friday, just go to bombbomb.com slash heart get set up. Even Larry Levine can use it. It's that easy. So you're going to really you gonna, enjoy you, Okay, it. dude. Now you're going to do <laughs> slam me because I'm so technically not inclined. But uh, but on a on a different note, really quick before we bring in Lee, here, here's what I'd like to challenge everyone is use video, right? I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. we love our friends at BombBomb Bomb and so forth. Even if it's just stick a, a smartphone in front of your face, pull pull up the, the app, do whatever, but just look yourself in in the camera and thank your customers for doing business with you. Just say, hey, I appreciate you, insert name. I appreciate you allowing me to serve you. Thank you for your business. I sincerely appreciate it. Something as simple as that takes you 15 seconds to do. It'll come back tenfold, I promise you. It really is amazing. And as we get ready to introduce Lee, um, I wanna invite everybody to join us in the challenge group on LinkedIn. 
If you're not in there already, it's a private group. This is where we're sharing encouragement videos and stuff in between the sessions. Um, so join that group and we'll get you approved uh, here after the meeting. The link is right there in the chat. Today's guest, I think is Larry, is a perfect fit for client appreciation because client appreciation and differentiation not only rhyme, but they also have a lot to do with <laughs> each other. Because I and I saw this crystal clear yesterday with with Tom. Tom's golden heart, he's a heart of gold, cares about people, shows appreciation. It wasn't fake, it was real, but in the process of showing appreciation, he totally differentiated himself in the mass ocean of real estate agents in his marketplace. And I, I see this um, appreciation as it's got to be heartfelt, can't be disingenuous, but as we appreciate people, it begins to differentiate. And, and, and when I think differentiation, you know who I think about, right, Larry? My man, Lee Sauls. <laughs> That's right. So without further ado, welcome a wild, crazy, raving virtual welcome to the author of Sales Differentiation himself, Lee Sauls. What's going on, Lee? <laughs> hey. oh. All right, I got a complaint. What? I got a complaint. <laughs> ah, Get him out of here. You didn't have my favorite drink in the green room. What's up with that? Hey, well, we Lee, but... <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. It's not the shade of blue, but I'm glad you're wearing as close to Dodger blue as Lee oh, Sauls has. Oh, 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 yeah. You know what? Spring showed up in Minnesota. <laughs> so I figured I get two days of it so I can wear, you know, summery type clothes. And you guys, I was disappointed. I'm waiting in this green room and I'm waiting for you to bring up my favorite drink and you never did it. Well, you know, virtually, yeah. you probably just missed it, but the, all the virtual <laughs> amenities were there in the green room. Lee, we're so glad you're here. And um, I know from reading uh, not only sales differentiation, I also got an opportunity to read your new book, a preview of it, which it is fantastic. I'm sure you'll be talking yeah. about that. Um, you're all about gratitude and appreciation. I see you model it. I see you write about it. Um, and I just, I'm so glad you're here today. And I'm looking forward to you unpacking some of these ideas for us. Well, thank you. I, it, it's an honor to be a part of this. And we don't think enough about this, we, this whole idea. And, and I hate the word customer, by the way. I like client. Yeah. Um, and, and I see you refer to it that way as well. Yes. And, and that drives me nuts when, when salespeople talk about customers, because if you would ask them, do you want to be called a vendor? Like, whoa, don't call me a vendor. It's like a four letter word. Well, <laughs> That's what calling them a customer is. Look it up in Webster's. A vendor comes from Spanish, vender, to sell, right? No value in the relationship. There isn't even a relationship. You sell stuff. Guess what? Look up customer. It's one who buys stuff. Customers have vendors, right? If we want to be seen as a valued, meaningful partner, then we refer to them as clients. And look that up. You'll see it's one who's under the protection of another. And yeah, that's, 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 oh, that's good. I love that's it. That's a mic drop moment. Um, that's good. When you said <laughs> vendors vend things, I thought you said the customers cuss. And that is true <laughs> as well, too. So, uh, <laughs> well, hey, this is uh, this is a great, great time of year. And one of the great things about spring is baseball. And um, yeah. one of the things that I just love anytime you and Larry get together, like I'm kind of a neutral ground. I'm a Canadian. So, you know, a Blue Jays fan. but you guys get at it when it comes to uh, baseball teams. We, we, get, we get at it. Oh, oh, I got, oh, Lord. I got nothing. I got nothing because I happened just before we got started. I looked at the Jays record. I looked at Dodgers record. And I looked at the Yankees record. And, yeah, I'm done talking about that. <laughs> 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 well, onward. This isn't this isn't a baseball show, even though we can turn it into one real quick. But yeah. nevertheless, hey Lee, you know we appreciate when it comes to appreciation and differentiation. Uh, you're one of the best out there. We look forward to the stories and the tips and the insight that you'll be bringing us over the next little bit to really help the sales professionals out there stand out from from what I call the sea of sameness. Well, I'll tell you what I can promise the audience is this. Of all the speakers you're going to see during Client Appreciation Week, I'm definitely one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that so is uh, that's a great setup. So 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's uh, let's just let's hand this over to Lee, and he he's got some stuff for us. It's going to be fantastic. So take it away, Lee. So, guys, I, I hope you'll indulge me a little bit. I want to do a little dad brag thing, if you don't mind. So, my my son Stephen plays baseball for Augsburg University. He's a sophomore. Might as well have been a, a freshman because they didn't have a season last year. As a sophomore. He got the triple crown at, at Augsburg, top in home runs, batting average, and RBIs. And I, I'm going to add a fourth to that, which is also he made Dean's list. So that's my dad brag moment. <laughs> and this past weekend, we got to see him play at the University of Minnesota, and he hit a home run in the same stadium that Paul Molitor and Dave Winfield played in. And, and it got me to reminisce. I started thinking back to when he was in high school. And he was a high school baseball player and had aspirations of playing ball in, in college. And during his junior year, my wife, Sharon, and I kept saying, hey, Stephen, you know, you need to set up college visits. You need to get going on that. It was a little slow in doing that. And I've come to find that apparently a lot of kids are overly eager in pursuing that next step in college. Well, that uh, spring after his junior year, he was playing in an American Legion baseball tournament. And if you're not familiar with American Legion, this is where the college scouts come looking for talent. And in the course of a week, Stephen hit four home runs and three doubles. And it was like, oh, my gosh. No longer were we asking Stephen to contact colleges. They were now coming to us. And if you've ever been through a college recruiting experience before, you know it's a sale. These coaches are trying to sell you on their institution, but they can't differentiate what they sell. They can't add a major or build a dorm, move the campus. They're all fixed assets. It just is. The sole set of tools that they have to work with is differentiating how they sell. And some of these coaches were absolutely fantastic at it, and some failed miserably. Now, guys, you know, when you first Go to visit a college as soon as you cross onto the campus, your blood pressure jumps about 30 points. Why? Can't find a place to park. Every parking lot on a college campus says, park here and we're going to tow you, but welcome to our fine institution. Well, this one school we visited, we pull into the parking lot and there's a spot with Stephen's name right on it. Stopped us dead in our tracks. Then we go inside. And there's an agenda for the day with Stephen's name printed at the top. What did it cost this university to do these two things? A penny, maybe. But how did they make us feel? They made us feel special. They made us feel like Stephen was the only athlete they were recruiting anywhere on the planet. Of course, that wasn't the case, but that's how they made us feel. Another school... It was a rainy day when we went to visit, and the coach said to Stephen, text me when you get here, which he did. And, and we go inside, and the coach is sitting there and says, I hope you don't mind, but I didn't invite admissions to join us. I'm going to do the tour. Spent four hours with us that very first day. After that, he was texting and emailing Stephen back and forth almost on a weekly basis. Not saying, did you make a decision, but getting to know him. Invited Stephen to come on campus and have dinner with a bunch of the players and go to a women's volleyball game. Now, most kids, when they find out they've been accepted to a university, they get a letter in the mail. Not Stephen. He got a phone call from his coach saying, welcome to Augsburg University, and he accepted. And he has just completed his sophomore year at Augsburg University, and I just shared with you what his accomplishments have been. See, what those coaches did so well is they made us feel special. Stephen and our entire family, it had wow factor. And what did it cost to do these things? Nothing. See, we forget to make our prospects and our clients feel special. It's just, it's another lead, it's another meeting, it's another presentation, it's another proposal. Now I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag and I'm gonna share with you 
one of my own personal success secrets. None of my clients can tell you how many active clients I have. And the reason is I make them feel like I've got one. One. And that's my challenge for each one of you. It's not just another lead. It's not just another meeting. It's not just another presentation. It's not just another proposal. It's your only one. And you need to make them feel special. And once they're signed on with you, that whole idea of making them feel special doesn't end. And here's the question that I share with all of you. It's a foundation question to help you differentiate how you sell. Look at every touch point, every interaction you have, and ask yourself this question. What is it that I can do different than the competition that my buyer will find meaningful? So it's not different for the sake of different. I have this video series and in one of the videos, I come out wearing my wife's beach hat and I ask the cameras, is this different? And of course it is, but is it meaningful? And the answer is no. So I toss it off my head, meaningfully different. And that means looking at how you prospect, how you handle a discovery meeting, how you put together a presentation, how you put together a proposal, how you handle customer service, how you handle account management. And by the way, those are not synonyms. Customer service is a responsive function. It's not a person. It's when they ask you for something, it's how quickly and accurately you respond to it. Account management is the proactive side of the equation. The value you provide above and beyond the products and services that you sell. What is it that you can do different in every interaction you have that they're going to find meaningful in ways that your competition does not? That's what you're looking for. Now, it's interesting. There were seven schools that were chasing Stephen. The one that was at the top of his list, like bags packed, he's going there, was at the bottom of the list at the end of the process. Now, they didn't get rid of a major. They didn't knock down a dorm, and they didn't move the campus. What changed was our perception of that institution based on the recruiting experience, the sale. They said, oh, yes, we, we want Steven. We see him playing first base and third base for us and, and, and pitching as well. The actions didn't support it. it. Was number one, was number seven. And I'll take it a step further. We just went through the process with Steven's younger brother, David. He's a pitcher. And this school was not even on his consideration list when he went through the recruiting process. He had no interest in considering that school at all. So when you think about the experience that you provide to your clientele, it's not just about the one, it's the exponential effect. There used to be a, a shampoo commercial where they talked about, and he told two friends, and he told two friends, and so on, and so on. It's the same thing. When you deliver an outstanding client experience, they're going to tell others. Guess what? You deliver a lousy experience, they're going to tell others as well. So the burden is on you each one of you that's watching this program to create a client experience based on authenticity. You've got to care. And just like these coaches did, make every single one of your clients feel special. As you had said, um, and, and, and let's dive into this because there's so many nuggets in there mm -hmm. is you said something around different being different and being meaningful. And when we show appreciation and we show gratitude and we show thank you yeah. to our clients. Yeah, we're thinking we're different and I'm not here. I, I'm just here to take to open this in a different realm. Yeah. Is it meaningful to you? Or is it meaningful to your client? And I think sometimes what happens is we get caught up in the, I got to outdo, right? When it comes to thank yous and appreciation, I got to create something that's so outlandish that it's going to stick. Great. You're different, but is it going to be meaningful to your client? That's right. That's right. And that means you need to get to know your client, what they like, what they dislike, what's important to them so that you can create that kind of alignment. 
<clears throat> and this is why I love the differentiation between customer and client. I think, you know, customers go to Walmart, they buy toothpaste, they stand in line, they're just a number. Clients have trusted advisors and it is a relationship. And we all say that we want to be the trusted advisor. It's yes. things like making it special, uh, like the story you just told and these different ways we're showing appreciation that actually generate relationship. I mean, on a people that I have a relationship with, you know, they give me gifts. They, they appreciate me. They send me notes. They, um, you know, shout out to Tegmeyer, sent me a, a Starbucks gift card today. Thank you, Dave. Uh, you know, that's, that's relationship clients. Yeah. You know, clients are just, it's all the same. It's it's everyone gets the same thing. I'll tell you a great story along those lines. Years ago, I had the sales person that worked for me and she created so much value in the relationship with prospects. They weren't even spending a nickel with us yet because their, their contracts had to expire before they could switch to us. And Fortune 1000 companies, huge companies, when she had her baby, bought her gifts, weren't spending a nickel, but she created so much value in the relationship as a prospect that they were, I mean, it was amazing watching all these gifts going just, oh, here's another one, here's another one. Mm -hmm. hey, a story. I don't know if you ever heard this story. It's a great story. Um, this man's on his deathbed and he's about to die and the devil comes to see him. <laughs> Have you heard this? No. You heard about this? Yeah. Devil comes to see him. He says, you know, I've, I've heard some, You've probably heard some really terrible things about the place where I'm from, but they're not true. Take a little trip with me. <laughs> I said, okay, fine. Checks it out. Goes to hell. And guess what? The food is amazing. The weather is gorgeous. He goes, oh, my gosh. You're right. You got a bad rap here. When I die, I'm coming here. And the next day, the guy dies. Goes to hell. Guess what? It's not like what he saw the day prior. All of a sudden, the food is awful. The weather is terrible. And he tracks down the devil. And he and he says, I don't understand. Yesterday, the food was wonderful. The weather was great. And now they're, they're terrible. He says, yes. Well, yesterday, you were a prospect. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh ouch. That, that, Our that, industry, ouch. our profession has taken a black eye from salespeople who court the dickens out of accounts. And then once they say yes, all of a sudden they make them a number and they overset expectations. They come in, they're expecting this, they get this and they're miserable. Just like with that joke. Yeah. And we right. want our clients. To you haven't heard that one? No, no that's you know really what? I, I may have, but for no, I I even put that in sell different. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I, that's, that is a great story. And, uh, it, it, it it's so good because it's painfully true in so many situations. And this is where, you know, when, when you think about, we want, uh, I mean, everyone has had problem clients. Everyone has had friction in client relationships. Real life is like that. I mean, nothing ever seems to go perfectly. Um, and so we want grace from our clients, right? We want our clients to be kind to us. We want our clients to be forgiving and, reasonable and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's what we want, I'm just having a light bulb moment here. What are we willing to invest in those clients in order to receive that type of grace? And this is where, you know, these things like, you know, you don't have to renovate someone's kitchen, although that's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, I need a new deck, by the way. If that guy wants to give me a free deck, <laughs> oh. that's right. I, I'm pretty sure it was a pretty large purchase order uh, in contrast to that. But um, so I'm sure you can call George and, and he'll work something out for you. But but if you look at uh, seriously, though, if, if you think about we want um, good relationships with our clients, we want grace, we want flexibility, um, you know, we want um, we want that and, and we need to invest in the way to invest in that is making the experience amazing, showing gratitude, yeah. doing the little things. At the end of it, I thought your punchline was going to be the devil's in the details. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> I thought you were going to spin no. that around somehow. But right. it's these little details, right? It's the, it's the. Um, oh man, I've just got, I just, Rich just sent me a card. Rich, shout out to Rich, right? Rich sent me yeah. a send out card today. I opened it up. It was on my desk. Um, and I'm encouraged, right? I mean, that was, 
that's a nice little detail, uh-huh. like, you know, it, and, and this is where um, I think if we want the flexibility, we want the awesome clients, we kind of need to invest in the awesome. Like we need to make them awesome. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way. We've all been to a steakhouse where we order a steak and it doesn't come out the way we've ordered it. The clock doesn't start ticking on whether or not we return to that restaurant until we've informed the wait staff. Then what happens? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do they make the situation right? It's not about the steak. It's about the experience. What did they do to make it right? There's this one place uh, Sharon and I go for, for date night dinners. And at that one intersection, there are five places you could go to get a good steak. And we keep going to the same restaurant and it's not even the restaurant. It's this one waitress named Sarah. We make the reservation and it's in Sarah's section. So with COVID, We hadn't been in that restaurant for eight months, eight months. We came back in and unlike you guys in the green room, she remembered my favorite drink (laughs) and I didn't say a word, brought it to the table. So I should tell you what this drink is. It's an Arnie Palmer with a splash of grenadine and slice of orange instead of lemon. It's outstanding. Look it up. It doesn't have a name, so we call it the Lee Sauls. And my kids particularly enjoy when I go in a restaurant and I'm feeling a little feisty. And it's my turn to order, and I ask for a Lee Sauls. And my wife, and they'll be like, oh, what's a Lee Sauls? And my wife goes, that's Lee Sauls. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you're, and by the way, Lee, you're one of a kind. But I, I, I just, I'd be remiss because I'll, I'll, this has been stuck in my head for the last 10 or 15 minutes, but I want to go back to Dave Tegmeyer for a moment. And there, there's going to be a Starbucks story behind this, but you know, I love De- Dave and I love get to know him and all that, but it goes back to being different <clears throat> and being meaningful because Dave and I have spent the time to get to know each other. And he knows I'm a Starbucks junkie and he knows that I love grande Americanos. And thus, you know, thanks for the gift card that he sent to both Daryl and I. But I want to peel this back one more because it's about the experience and it's about showing appreciation. Is I saw this, this was this past Saturday at Starbucks. Place was just packed. My wife Robin wanted her favorite drink, which is an iced chai latte, which I think they're horrible, but nevertheless, she loves them. And so I said, sure, honey, I'll go get you one. And I was getting my grande Americano. I walk in, I open the door, Starbucks is packed. And I go, okay, this is going to be some kind of wait. So I wait, order my drink. And no lie, one minute later, I get my grande Americano and I get my iced chai latte. And meanwhile, there's 10 people that have ordered before me. Store manager saw me walk in. I'm a frequent visitor. Wow. They bumped the order. She walked the drinks out and she goes, I just appreciate that you come by here all the time. Thank you. Did she have to do it? No, but it goes back to what Tom Hopkins said yesterday. It's the small things, right? It's the small things done repeatedly. Am I the only person she did that for? Probably not. But at that moment, I was the only person she did that for. It's the appreciation. It's the care and the thank yous. It's the little things. It is. One little thing that I do when a, when a client contracts with me for sales differentiation program, they don't know about this. The one who contracted with me gets a box of Godiva chocolates. It's and with a note that says, looking forward to your sweet success. They don't know what's coming, but I always get a phone call afterwards, not an email. I get a phone call. Yeah, that reminds me of one of the one of the gratitude things I saw from McGregor, which I thought was great. Scott McGregor, I think he's going to make a cameo later this week. I hope he will. Uh, You know, Scott sent me out a uh, he knows I like cigars. So he sent me a beautifully wrapped fine cigar and a box of matches with his logo on it. And uh, just a little handwritten note that said, here's the beginning of a great partnership. And, um, you know, that has to be personalized. If you send it to someone else, they might go, oh, you know, that's, but, but that, you know, just like the mm, detail touch, right. To know, 
Um, shout out to Scott. We got a question from Brian, um, and I'll just pop it up here. Brian uh, says, Lee, are you a believer in the plus one philosophy or something similar? I'm not familiar with that one. What's the plus one? I don't know. Maybe he'll put it in the chat. <laughs> so I, you know what? Do you know what it is, Larry? We're about uh, to learn no, now. I was never really good at math. But no. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you got in sales. Yeah, that's why I fell into sales. I thought plus <laughs> one was like bringing a date to a wedding or something. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm sure Brian will put it in the chat, but I do love okay. this this quote. Um, this quote here that he that he shared right before as well as from uh, you know one of my heroes, Steve Jobs. People don't know what they want until you show it to them, and so. This, you know, when it comes to the the white gloves and the appreciation and the experience we create for our clients, um, I, you know, the reality is, and I actually think this might be in your book, Lee, you know, we're not competing with, this is in your book, we're not competing with um, the other salespeople in our little narrow industry selling our product. Right. As you say, in sales differentiation, we're competing with every salesperson that's calling on the prospect. So, you know, exactly. what are we going to do that's different? Yeah. And so I, I love asking this question to salespeople. I'll say, who's your toughest competitor? And three names just roll right off their tongues, A, B, and C. And I'm sure those are tough competitors, mm -hmm. but there's one even tougher. And they say, oh, you mean that sales trainer one, the status quo, the choice to do nothing. Also a tough competitor, but there's one even tougher. Mm -hmm. And someone will shout out, ourselves. Well, if you don't have the right mindset, you can be your own worst enemy. But there's one competitor even tougher. And guys, I've never had anyone guess it. And uh, Daryl, you just talked about it from my books, actually in Sell Different. And it's every salesperson calling on the same person you are trying to get a meeting. See, when we think about competition, we're egocentric. We see it from our side of the desk. But put yourself on their side. Imagine a CIO. A CIO is getting calls and emails from salespeople representing his or her entire purview of responsibilities and beyond. And they all want the same thing, FaceTime, a meeting, whether it be in person or virtual. And, and I'll give you a little bit of history. I was a history major. In the entire history of business, no executive has ever been hired with the sole responsibility of meeting with salespeople every hour on the hour. It's never happened. So we're an interruption in their day. So if we're going to be the one that's going to get that meeting, we have to do something meaningfully different to stand out, not from the players in our space, from all the hundreds, if not thousands of salespeople calling on that same individual, trying to get their attention to get a meeting. Yeah. You know, there's, we, we all think that, um, <laughs> I always say this stuff's not rocket science. If you want it, turn it into rocket science. You can come over to my house. I'll introduce you to my dad because he was one. This is, <laughs> the, you know, appreciation and thank you and gratitude and the experience that you provide to your clients and your future clients. That's the differentiation. That's the game changer. So, Daryl, I'm going to throw out a little challenge for everyone right now. It won't be the one that we leave you with, but I encourage everybody to do this because it plays off of the two words that Lee's used over and over. It's different and meaningful. What I'd like everyone to think about is think about some of their top clients right now and then think about some of their top prospects. So you all got that. And then what I'd like for you to find out is find out something that's meaningful to them, whether it's that grande Americano from Starbucks or that steak from their favorite, you know, restaurant, or it's the, you know, the Yankees favorite tickets. place, no Yankees tickets, or it's the favorite place they go take their car to get washed, something mm -hmm. like that. Differentiate yourself with that experience and send them something around that and watch what happens. So powerful. Absolutely. So I want to come back to that, that steak story. So this wonderful uh, wait staff, she's just wonderful, Sarah. Here, here's the foresight she has. So steak doesn't get prepared right. And I like my steak with some drawn butter. I And this just happened a couple of weeks ago. Steak didn't come out right. And she takes it back, very apologetic. And I said to my wife, I go, Sharon, I bet you she comes out with another carafe of drawn butter because she knows new steak comes out by the time she brings out the butter is going to be cold. Sure enough, here's the steak. Here's the new butter. 
Now, if you don't care about the dining experience, just here's your steak. <laughs> Not only that, we're done. She's like, you know what? We didn't get the steak right. And, and that obviously didn't make for the best experience for you and your wife. Desserts on me. What do you want? I mean, she cares about the experience. And that's for us. That's why we keep going back there. If she left and went to one of the other steakhouses, guess what? We follow her. Yeah, you know what? I think that's the example. What you just said is I think that's the example of where Brian was going with that plus, plus one. Okay, let's see. When there's yep. ups, yeah, the, when there's a problem, you don't just solve it. You go above and beyond. It's yeah. the dessert, yes. right? It's the it's the extra. And that's um, that's really powerful. I think that's something to remember because there yeah. is al there are always going to be problems. It, you know, this is the, we live in the real yeah. world. When there's a problem, we have an opportunity to, to go above and beyond. Absolutely. So, and that's the thing. So many salespeople, when their company makes a mistake, they forget that nobody's perfect. Everybody makes a mistake. And by the way, the people that we're working with, their companies aren't perfect either. They make mistakes. Mm -hmm. and, and you're exactly right, Daryl. It's an opportunity, right? It's a data point. A mistake has yep. happened. And yep. we can decide to go, oh, my gosh, and go yell at operations and everyone else who, who made a mistake. Or we can say, I've got an opportunity to strengthen the relationship with my client. And I'm going to own this and make it right. And you'll be amazed. Um, I remember when I, I first got transferred to the DC area. First thing was there's this client who's absolutely miserable, hates us. And this is kind of a cute story. So I'm in Northern Virginia. And at the time the, the beltway had, uh, didn't have consistent numbering. So you actually had the same exit number in Maryland and in Virginia. And I was new to the area. So I go to solve this. This is, you know, before we have phones and stuff, it's maps and, so I'm driving around for an hour trying to find this, this place. And I'm, I get off the exit where they said to, to get off. And this building is nowhere to be found because I was in the wrong state. I was in Maryland, not Northern Virginia. <laughs> that, I, I made that situation right. And not only did they not cancel, they became a large, major client of ours. Hey, hey, Lee, I got, I got a quick question. I think that this would be a great way to, hey, Daryl, to put a bow on, on, on this phenomenal conversation with Lee. If Lee, if you're going to coach our, you know, the people watching this to, uh, I, we'll just call it like the top two or the top three, what would be the top two or three things that you can leave everyone with on some tips they can immediately put into play to show their clients appreciation and thank yous, something to get them thinking a little bit different? Sure. So the first one is, and it's one I can't teach you, is you gotta care. If you don't care, I can't help you. Yeah. Right, if, if it's not selling from the heart, and you guys know all about that, if you ain't got it, I can't teach it to you. You either do or you don't, but that's the first step is to care. The second step, and if I asked you guys to guess what my next step would be, you'd never guess it. And it's use your CRM. CRMs make you Ooh. look smart. Mm -hmm. So when they tell you their wife's name, their interests, their kids' interests, like I told you the story about Steven and playing baseball, you put that in your CRM. You don't have to remember everything. You have it documented so that you have it filed away. And when you're interacting with them, you can do something meaningful so use your crm to do it and then i'm going to come back to that foundation question i shared earlier for every touch point every interaction you have with your buyers ask yourself this question what is it that i can do different than the competition that my buyer will find meaningful so those are my my three tips for our audience today so uh, so spot it. so spot on, and I, by the way, I can't wait for the book to come out. Yeah, and tell us Brian, about it. I just have to yeah, I just have to acknowledge Brian Kelmy says, can you tell us a little bit more about your new book before we leave? I can. So it's titled Sell Different. It's a next edition of Sales Differentiation. So you could have read Sales Differentiation, not read Sell Different, and vice versa. Of course, we want you to read both. Um, but these are strategies. Doesn't matter what you're selling. Product, service, technology, B2B, B2C, doesn't matter. These are strategies to create meaningful value, to differentiate 
how you sell. So in the second half of sales differentiation, I gave you strategies for that. Here's 15 more that weren't in that book. Fantastic. And, and by the way, the out. book's amazing because I had a sneak peek already. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> it, it has some endorsements in it. Um, hey, when does it come out, Lee? When when can we see this on book stands? Well, you can pre-order it now on Amazon um, and it'll ship middle of September, like around the 15th. Fantastic. Well, Lee, hey, thank you so much This at uh, this conversation. As always, every time we talk Guys, to you, thank you. So much this is always a blast. So the next good. Next time in the green room, you'll have a Lee Sauls waiting for me, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, hey, by the way, not only Lee will I have a Lee Sauls waiting for you, yeah. I'm gonna have a Dodger dog waiting for you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> by the way, if you guys want to have some fun, when we go down to Outbound, because Jamie's gonna be with me, mm -hmm. go, hey, um, I want to buy your your dad a Lee Sauls, and she will go, oh. <laughs> uh, we're definitely going to do that and yeah. uh, we will see you next month out <laughs> yeah i'll see you at outbound lee absolutely yeah, we'll see you there lee thank you so much thank we you lee. You, thank man. you guys all right take care well i love uh, lee sauls he never lee's disappoints so good. i mean just no so, not at all you know it, lee's always this practical this combination of inspiration and then practical inspiration and then just right on practical and i got so many great ideas today from this conversation that I think are going to tee up our challenge really nicely for this evening. Well, here was, I want to go back to what he said at the very end when I asked him to coach us through the, you know, a couple quick tips. Point two was just, that was a jaw drop. Use your CRM. Cause how many times do we, we build up this knowledge, right? We, we still have this institutional knowledge of our clients or our buyers, right. but what do we do with it? Oh, so it's true. hard to remember. Mm -hmm. It is. Especially you, Daryl, because you're so much older than I am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Um, hey, you know, this is this is um this is this is details. The, the details are where we win. And uh this is where um I think I want to throw the challenge tonight towards what is the most meaningful. What's an example of a meaningful way that you've said thank you, where, you know, you paid attention to the details, you remembered the ingredients for the Lee Sauls, you know, you remembered um, that uh, Larry and his wife like these specific drinks. Uh, what's a good story? I think that would be a really cool challenge tonight. By the way, the, ch the way the challenge is working just you know, pop a camera uh, in front of your face and tell tell the story of the most meaningful way you've said thank you in the past. Or if you can't think of one, think of one that you're going to do and do it. <laughs> uh, put it in front of your face. If you don't know how to record a video, just download bombbomb.com slash heart. You'll get free access to that for 14 days. They'll make it super simple. Um, but yeah, record that video. We'll pick what we think is the best one and show it tomorrow. But on Friday... American Idol style, we're going to have four, <laughs> we're going to pick, and the winner is going to get a free ticket to the next Selling from the Heart Intensive. And uh, it is a 12-week journey um, into authentic selling, and you're absolutely going to love it. Uh, so this is a big deal. You want to win this prize. There'll be a prize for the runner-up we'll announce tomorrow as well. But put the camera in front of your face, tell a quick story. What was the what was a way that you said thank you that was meaningful? And I think we're going to get some good responses. No, that's, that's so good, Daryl. And just yeah, no, that's awesome. And just real quick, can you just for everyone just plug the um, where they upload the video to so everyone knows and has it? Yeah, you're you're um, I'm looking at screens that are open. So while I'm doing that, Larry, I'm going to uh, have you introduce our guest for tomorrow. While so I'm finding that link. Yeah, so tomorrow we're we're in for a really good treat because the rest of the week, what we're going to do is bring practitioners to the forefront that are actually live in the sales world right now. They're in the trenches with everybody. Joy McAdams, she's just a powerhouse. She's down in the Southeast, and when it comes to um, 
her area of expertise, and by the way, this is thanks to Scott McGregor for for really introducing me to Joy McAdams, and I have a sneaky feeling Scott's going to make a cameo here pretty quick, is she helps the medical world, doctors and all that, market themselves and to create the experience around their practice and their specialties. She helps to bring doctors to life through appreciation and thank yous and so forth. Joy, you are actually going to love Joy McAdams tomorrow at 100%. She's just amazing. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. So take the challenge this evening, uh, record a quick video about a way that you showed thank you in a meaningful way. You showed appreciation in a meaningful, personalized way. Enter that in the LinkedIn group. The group is in the chat. If you're not already in there, uh, join us uh, for some conversation after hours behind the scenes. If you want to join us for the VIP party, we'll put that link in the LinkedIn group as well and to get some swag and uh, join us for the VIP party. That'd be a lot of fun. Larry, this is, <laughs> I'm just so excited about, we're only two days into this and I feel like uh, I've gotten everything. Uh, I got more than the price of admission, which by the way, was free. <laughs> Thanks to our friends at Tom Bomb and Outbound and uh, From the Heart Cards, we'll introduce you to them tomorrow. But this is uh, this is really exciting, Larry. And, and I'm just so I just want to say I appreciate you and I appreciate uh, your heart that you're bringing to this. Um, I don't know anyone that says thank you more than Larry Levine. And uh, it's an honor <laughs> to be here with you and, and co-host this challenge. No, and, and I'll leave everyone with this. And, and I think this will get you thinking is, and it goes back to what Lee Sauls was saying, is we forget about all the things that happened, you know, afterwards. Work just as hard to make the sale. Work just as hard after the sale. Keep the appreciation and the thank yous going because more than anything else, it's after the sale that will stand out than before the sale. So keep the thank yous, the appreciation, the gratitude flowing. That's the experience. Those are the things that people will remember, Daryl. That's right. So thank you to everybody for joining us today. Put your uh, a, a challenge video in the LinkedIn group. Uh, put it out there. What what have you done that's shown thanks meaningful? You may go, well, mine's not that meaningful. Yes, it is. And this is where we want to cheer each other on. So if you're the one thinking, I'm not going to do that, I challenge you to do it. Uh, and let's encourage each other in this. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 12 o'clock Eastern time. And uh, let's say thank you. Thank you for being a part of the 2021 Client Appreciation Challenge. Now it's time to take action. We challenge you to take what you learned today to show appreciation to your clients. As you do, let's cheer each other on. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.